Okay, and welcome. I'm Warren McDonald with the Challenge of Change, and I am super psyched today to have Sean Stevenson joining us from Chicago, Illinois. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, Warren. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, good to see you. It's been uh, way too long, but uh, but great to be seeing you via Skype today. Why don't you? Uh, why don't we start out, and uh, if you can kind of give viewers a little bit of a, a kind of a snapshot on uh, on who who Sean Stevenson is, and uh, yeah, let's kind of roll from there. Sure. So, what most people notice right away is that I'm not uh, the typical individual. I'll back up a little bit so everybody can get a, a gander at the goodness here. So, uh, three feet tall in a wheelchair for mobility, because I was born with a, a rare condition called osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bones disorder. Mm. So when I was born, uh, the doctors told my parents that I wasn't even going to survive the first 24 hours of life because of this condition. And what's great is I just celebrated my 32nd birthday, and all those doctors are dead now. So <laughs> you, can, nice. you, you can't always trust the experts. So even take it with a grain of salt what I have to say. Um, and let's see, with this condition, I had over 200 fractures by the time I was 18. Something as simple as sneezing would fracture a collarbone or a rib. And I say it casually now because I've come out the other side. Uh, but my childhood was very grueling. I mean, 200 bone fractures, 18 years of excruciating uh, scoliosis, back pain, uh being stared at, you know, having to not be able to play ball with my friends. There's a lot of frustrating times, but as hopefully we'll get to in this interview, uh, with all that said, I had a magnificent uh, childhood as well as an incredible life since then. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, you've got to love that about uh, about experts, hey, and, and, and doctors, that uh, how did they... So, what do they? What do they base? They, they basically just base that on experience. That in in our experience and from what we've seen, you may not get through the first twenty four hours. But they must have been astounded to kind of watch you, you go on. And although I get you were probably too too young, but this must have kicked in at some point that you had this sense of proving them wrong. Maybe. Well, I don't even know. You know, like some people are um, driven by. Uh, silencing the skeptics, if you will, or the cynics. I don't, I'm not as militant and driven that way. I just like having a good time. And oh. so at a young age, I realized, wait a minute. You know, I don't want to just be the most successful kid in a wheelchair, you know, at the time. I want to be the most successful kid. And then when I got to a teenager, I thought, well, I want to be the most successful teenager. And then as I grew into adulthood, I thought, you know, I don't. I don't want to benchmark myself amongst people with disabilities. I want to benchmark yeah. myself towards the best of the best. Yeah. And so I really I haven't um, identified much with my disability or with those with disabilities. I have like a kinship. You know, when I see you at a bar and we start talking, I think there's an unspoken agreement that, you know, we both have gone through our tough times, yeah. but that we came out the other side with a good attitude. So, you know, to, to full circle answer your question, yeah, they they looked at the statistics and thought well, with my level of severity, probably wasn't going to make it. And then they said if he doesn't make it, if he makes it through twenty four hours, he probably won't make it for forty eight. And then, then eventually, I think they just they just stopped making the prediction that I was going to die because uh, they could see I wasn't going anywhere. Right. Yeah. Then it became a case of stepping back and and uh, and, and and saying, look at this guy go. Yeah, but that's a huge cool. that's a huge huge uh, perception piece that you just touched on just there, and and I talk a lot about that. But how uh, when you say that you just didn't you didn't go down that track of identifying with your disability, but instead of identifying successful people in in general, and and putting yourself up uh, up there. Yeah, and, and and that's something that. Or it gets mixed reactions from people. You know, yeah. some people uh, some people hear that and they go, "Yeah," and they celebrate it, and they're like, "You know, he he sees him first as an he sees himself as an individual, and 
and a human before any other container or condition. Some people would rally behind me and get excited to hear me share that belief system. And other people get very angry. They're like, well, but you're you're not being true to your, your type or your kind or, you know, and, and it doesn't matter if you're black, gay, Jewish, a woman, disabled, it doesn't matter what you, you know, you, you connect to because you think you are that, yeah. you're really limiting yourself if that's what you think you only are. You know, I'm, I'm far more, just, just not too long ago, I got a tattoo, see if I can show you here, nice, yeah. not too long. I got a tattoo of the infinity symbol, and my uh, my soon to be fiance got one too. And we prescribe to the idea that you're infinite. You know, you're not a disabled man in a wheelchair. You're not you're not your title or your container or even your past. Yeah. You know, I I think you're far more than all of that. So perception wise, you know, I think you and I are on the same wavelength when it comes to life. Quality of life is not based on uh, the facts. It's your interpretation of the facts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. I had, uh, it's f funny you mentioned about people uh, getting upset about uh, about not seeing ourselves as disabled. I had a guy say to me once, do you know what? I hate people like you. He And then he went on to tell me this story about how he was this like a full-blown her heroin addict and he would just say, do you know what, there would be nothing worse than me for to, when I was feeling at my absolute worst than to see a smiling guy in a wheelchair cruise by. And it was quite, yeah, it was quite an eye-opener for me because I hadn't really, hadn't really thought about it that way. But I'm a well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see it all the time too. I see it like... Um... For a long while, I, 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 well, about for four years, I taught men of all different shapes and sizes how to be confident to attract the right woman. That was a, an element to my business I went through, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, but I, I received hate mail from some men who said, one, I was probably lying. There's no way I could be getting a girl. And two, that I was probably paying these girls. I mean, all these men were coming up with this anger. And at first, I felt this need to defend myself and say, well, you know, why don't you talk to the girls? I'm happy to introduce you to them and have them tell you they love being with me. And, like, I, I felt the need to be in that defensive position. And then one day, the light bulb went off, and I realized, oh, okay. See, they aren't doing well with women. So then when all of a sudden a little man in a wheelchair comes along and is doing well, what does that say about them? And what is right. what are they going to have to do about that? They're not going to have an excuse anymore. So they have to just doubt the truth of it yeah. so that they can go on living their small life. Yeah. And, and, it's, and that was a big eye-opener when I realized that, you know, in another, another moment of perception change, I was in a nightclub once, and I was with some friends, a female friend of mine, and this... We went on the dance floor, and this other girl was there, and I went to dance with this other girl, and she looked at me, and she went, ew, no, and, like, she was just totally taken back, and my friend went to go punch this girl in the face. Wow. Like, because she was so angry that this person reacted that way, and I interrupted, and I said, whoa, 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 don't you realize that her reaction to me has nothing to do with me? It has everything to do with her. Wow. She wouldn't feel... She doesn't feel beautiful in her current body, which is smoking hot. How how would she feel in this container? You know, so she's she's perceiving that she would be miserable if she was in my container because she's already miserable in her container. Yeah. So yeah, I, I get that. You know, people would say that to you or me because it's like we shake up their reality. We we make them wonder if their excuses are really full of shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly, and it's it's uh, it's it's confronting for a lot of people, and and I think a lot of people don't get. Um, I know for me, I mean, you you just said you you were saying earlier that that you were born with with this condition, and that's kind of, that's a lot different from me. This condition was kind of thrown thrown on me at 32 so i i've i've lived that oh, you were 32 you were 32 i was 32 at the time yeah so you were you're my age now yeah got it yeah, okay I was, yeah i was your yeah your age uh big 
boulder comes falling out of the sky or not or not quite and that's and that's it you know from that it's a life-changing moment but I uh, I often think about that before that time I didn't really know anybody that used a, a wheelchair it just kind of wasn't part of my world and I, I haven't got specific memories of uh, of reacting in that way and judging somebody in that way but I think it would be I, 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 I can't say that I honestly, that that didn't happen, that I didn't react the same way because it's just not part so, of people's normal, normal world. So what I want to know is, because people ask me this question all the time, like, do you think it's easier to cope when you're born this way, you know, this way being an abnormality that makes you have to adapt yeah. or, or lose that which you had normally and go to a new reality like your condition you know which one's more difficult, and I think that I think that it's uh, it depends on what way you look at it, right? I mean, because yeah. if I could say you had thirty two years, you had my entire lifespan yeah. to to climb, walk, run, jump, do all of those things yeah. normally, yeah. And, and so you had taste. It's like you you got to love, but now you have to love through a new channel, right? Versus me, who can only conceptualize what that must feel like and be like but also didn't have to feel like something was taken from me exactly there's no there's no having to deal with that that loss that sense of loss yeah well definitely not in a uh, overnight kind of way because you know I still I, w I was with my girlfriend a couple weeks ago and I and I got frustrated with her we were talking about something and then I started to cry and she's like what's wrong and I said you know I still think after all these years I'm grieving over the loss of what I deem at times a loss of a normal body. Right. You know, even even though uh, perceptually I've had the same body my entire life, there's still that comparison game of what would my life have been like had I not been born in this type of container. And so I, I, I don't think even if you're born with an abnormality, you you never question. I think you always... You always perceptually wonder, you know, and maybe even do a little bit of mourning at times when you're in, when you're in a down cycle. Right. Yeah. No, I could uh, I could see that. I could see that for sure. Because the reality is that you are surrounded by people that are going about life in you know in a, in a normal quote quote unquote normal body, and 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 yeah, I could see that. It's interesting. One of the things that. Um, that I that I read about you that I think really helped you was that that idea that that was instilled on, upon you from an early age that that you know you can be whatever it is that you want to be and I think that's the differentiator right there from people that actually go on and and create something with their lives uh, as opposed to people that spend their lives in uh, in misery and I got to and, and when I say that I got to point out that I'm not no longer talking about people that are in this disabled box I'm talking people in general so. Sure. Well, my dad always, when I was a kid, I, I loved basketball, loved basketball, still do to this day. And I wanted to be in the NBA, like little tiny Sean wanted to be in the NBA. And my dad said, you know what, Sean, you can be, you're just going to have to be it in a different way. You know, you may not be able to play on the court, but someday if you, if you work hard enough, you could own a team. Yeah. So, you know, if, and that's the thing, you know, your program's about change, and the way I look at change, Warren, is that the only limitation, the only, quote, disability, take away the physicalness of that, but the only limitation to a human being is their, is their refusal to adapt. Wow. If you refuse to adapt, then you're way more disabled than you and I have ever been. Yeah. Um, if a person, whether they're a CEO of a company that doesn't like that, you know, the economy is the way it is, or you're a mother who is now a single mother because of a relationship breakup, or a kid whose parents uh, just got killed in a car accident. No matter how severe of a uh, condition that you're going through, if you refuse to adapt to what is, yeah. you will be limited. Yeah. But in the same breath, if you are willing to adapt, the world is yours. Mm. Yeah. Even willing to adapt, even uh, trying to trying to kind of uh, project 
like that that expectation of things being different is is as well i think really helps i, I it kind of drove me nuts in the last couple of years with uh, i'd get brought in to speak to a company and what they really wanted me to say was it's okay everybody just uh you know don't get too freaked out because the economy will come back and i and i'm like well hang on I, i'm not that guy because i'm not sure the economy will come back actually i'm certain it won't come back in the same way what will come will be different and if you can wrap your head around that and fit yourself into that picture, you, you'll probably do better than you did in the last economy. But it's this idea of, you just hit on it, this unwillingness to adapt. People just want the old back. And I think the sooner we, we wrap our heads around that that can't really happen, you know, we kind of, time, time doesn't work that way. Well, it do you know what the biggest, the biggest problem about 150 years ago was for uh, people running cities? It was, they were worried to death about how they were going to remove all of the horse poop because they knew that the number of horses that would go up uh, would continue getting bigger and bigger. Right. And so their number, one, their number one fear in planning cities and stuff in 150 years ago is how are we going to get rid of all the horse poop? Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think there's a single person that I know that wakes up worried about horse poop. Because it's not even in our awareness because we have these things called cars. Yeah. And now everybody worries about gasoline prices and pollution. Yeah. But 50 to 100 years from now, they could go, well, what do you mean they were worried about pollution and gasoline? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll have found a new challenge by then for sure. A challenge that we'll have to, uh, to yeah, that we'll have to adapt to, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Is it purely mindset and that um, that perception piece that was instilled in you that you could be anything? Do you think that that that, that was probably the single most important thing that helped you to to kind of get through something that a lot of people would look at and say, "Holy shit!" You know, that's kind of like a deal breaker. I don't want to go li through life like that. The same way that people look at me and they're like, "No, I, get, I don't even go there." I, I you know, I'd, I'd pull out a rope or whatever. Is it? Do you think that was the single most important piece that just how you how that was instilled in you that perception piece or was there something else inside as well I think there was three things um, one is the certainly having a, that belief system fostered by my parents that is this going to be a gift or a burden you know that was the big question and I and I chose to see it as a gift because I realized that you know everybody goes through pain Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I never, I've never suffered for a day. I've had moments where I feel upset, but I don't feel like I really suffer because I know that this is uh, not happening as a curse. That it's, there's a there's a greater purpose here. Um, yeah. So that was one element. The other element is that yeah, I think deep down inside, something was inside of me guiding me um, that's unspeakable. But the third thing, and this is where people have the most control over is I, I really became a, a student of success and successful thinking. So like I devour books and seminars and audio programs and conversations with guys like you to figure out like how do you get to the top in business and health and relationships and yeah, man, once you start studying success, once you start studying happiness and peacefulness and compassion and you start making that like a a regular thought in your mind and mm. dumping in new and new new newer information about how to be you know at your best yeah. you can't help but uh, continue uh, succeeding in your life you can't help but fostering that belief that everything is meant to happen for a reason right yeah which is part of it well yeah and you just hit right on it and that's that's the that's the cool thing about the position that we're in now is that we get to we get to put that out there for people as well mm -hmm. but that's yeah and that's an interesting thing one of the things that drives me nuts i've kind of been putting this thing out there for years and it's becoming less and less of a crazy idea it's that you know look people just can take your tv throw it out the window right cut the cable get rid of it and and stop stop uh, having your mind infiltrated by all the garbage it, that's out there when there's so much good stuff that we can be taking in and and reshaping the way that we the way that we see things oh well, we're not even doing it equally what i what i mean by that is like you know people that watch the news mm. 
Mm. They're going to get probably 95% negative dark information, right? Yeah. And that's just totally unbalanced because if you really were to get your mind to be open-minded, you would then balance it out by getting, you know, a good chunk of your day being filled with positivity. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not somebody that recommends wearing rose-colored glasses and saying that there's not war and challenges on this planet. There certainly are. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think that if I were to guess one, eight out of ten people are really good. They're just really good people. And they just really want to live happy lives and, and go about their life doing, you know, doing good things for those they love. But that 2% or that, that, that 20%, uh, they really uh, they get all the attention. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and 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 try and uh, try and sidetrack the rest of us and 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 pull us down that that road because you you're right. There's a lot of good uh, good stuff happening, but a big part of it that I see too is that if we all kind of take uh, my my partner Margot puts it this way that the problems that we see uh, outside in the world are a reflection of our inner inner selves, yes. and if we all yeah. took it on board to take care of our own, you know psychic stuff and deal with our own baggage then that that would be reflected in the in the outside world as, and i i got a sense that you're kind of on board with that one as above so below that yeah. whatever is without is with is uh, not within i mean that you know when i look at my life if my life is chaotic externally i go okay whoa whoa like yeah. what's going on internally yeah because when i really get my internals right like my my meditation going and my exercise regimen and my proper nutrition and keep my office and home clean you know like things just work yeah 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 whoever uh whoever put that one that one together as above as below is uh, kind of nailed it cool so what kind of um What's on the what? What's in the pipeline for you? What kind of what kind of cool things have have you have you got going on that that you see in the future for? Yeah, for um, well, that we can share with people. Sure. Well, I'm going to be getting married soon, that's so that's right. a big you'll that's a big be, deal. You'll probably be married by the time people uh, people see this, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I will. Uh, I'll be completing my doctorate. In a couple months, so I'll be Doctor Sean soon. Nice. So then I can be an ex. I can be an expert as well and be wrong too. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else am I working on? Just uh, we launched a, a really cool program called Living at Cause not too long ago. Yeah. So people can get from my website, and it's a it's a home it's a home study kit to help people uh, get more self reliant and take more charge of their life and deal with self-sabotage because the biggest thing that I find is you know if you can deal with what's uh, causing you self-sabotage then you're unstoppable but as long as you think that you're not at the center of your life it's somebody else's fault uh, you're going to continue screwing up mm. and that's something that you've worked on a fair bit by the sound of it with your, with your, with your coaching as well hey is helping people deal with yeah, I have a unique therapy practice that um, I have an office here in Chicago, yep. and people come spend a day with me. It's 14 hours in a row, and we peel back the layers to their ego and yeah. get to the heart of you know, who they truly are and what they're needing to contribute to this planet and yeah. pulling away their excuses, their fears, their insecurities. It's yeah. not for everybody. I see only a few clients a month, and I see them only one time, so it's a... Uh, it's an intense process. Yeah, and then could kind of probably be quite brutal, I would think, at the uh, and enlightening at the same time. Yeah, I I'm both loving and intense at the same what, time. And what it through that through the through all of those that you've done, what do you what what would you say? What's what is it generally that uh, why do people sabotage themselves? Because they aren't in rapport with themselves. I mean, like, you and I are in rapport right now. We're, we're having a good time. We're, we have that level of, you know, and I think rapport has everything to do with trust and respect. Like, you can tell I trust you. You can tell I respect you. And I can tell you trust me and respect me. And so, therefore, we could 
say anything to each other in this moment as long as that trust and respect is there. Yeah. Well, the problem is most people don't have that with themselves. Right. They don't trust themselves, and they certainly, sadly, don't respect themselves. And when you're not a employee with yourself, you're going to constantly keep sabotaging yourself. So you just start... You need to start treating yourself the way you would treat somebody you really admire. And that is, you got to start to trust yourself and you got to start to respect yourself. Yeah. And only. Easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah. It could. Uh, yeah. Simple, but, but, but far from easy. And only when you can, only when somebody can do that can can uh, can that be reflected outside of them in, in, in the way other people see them in the first place? I've, I've always kind of put this across especially to other people that are struggling with some kind of disability that you won't get somebody to uh to see you as something other than disabled until you can see yourself as something other than that and again and it's 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 also about trusting the process Warren, because look i think sometimes gurus experts authors speakers we can come across both accidentally and purposely sometimes like we have all the answers yeah. and that we never have bad days ourselves and that we never, you know, uh, break our own rules. But we do. I mean, we're human. And so I think the biggest thing is knowing that even people that teach this stuff, like you and I do, it, it's, it's not easy. Like you said, simple but not easy. And we, we backslide. We have days that we don't even follow our own material. But yeah. we also play the clock. We pay the consequences when we do when we don't follow that material. So for me, it's also teaching people that you know you're exactly where you need to be, but that doesn't need that doesn't mean you need to stay there. Exactly, and you and you really hit on something uh, earlier as well is that recognizing that uh, it's actually a choice that 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 you have to make on whether you stay there or not. Right. Cool. Well, you're giving me a couple of things to think about. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm sure uh, I'm sure people watching this are going to get uh, get a ton out of it as well. So they can find you online. Uh, what's the best website to find to kind of uh, Sean with you? SeanTimes dot com. That's S E A N Times T I M E S dot com. So Sean Times. Cool. So people should uh, should run, not walk, and uh, and uh, and check you out there. Well, I just want to say thanks again, Sean. It's good to re reconnect. And uh, thanks for taking the time out to join us here on uh, on the Challenger Change, and uh, look forward to hearing about more good things coming down the pipe from Sean Stevenson. Thank you, Warren. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Sean.